In my last video, I showed you how to use advanced filters to uh, take this data set here, which uh, I created this for a client. This was a list of keywords they're bidding on. I know it looks like I'm working for the mafia here. But they wanted these keywords with their competition and search volume numbers, which were pulled from the Google AdWords keyword tool, broken up into intuitive keyword categories. So I chose these categories, and then I used advanced filters to spawn off individual data sets. So a data set that only included keywords with seen in it, and then clean up and clean up. Uh, as two words and one word, blood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And by doing that, I was able to spawn off all of these individual data sets. But then ultimately, what I wanted to do was create a pivot chart like this so that you could choose the category from this report filter and the chart would update. And so now I'm going to show you how to do that. Unfortunately, this is a PC Swim only feature. Um, Excel for Mac does not support pivot charts, which is one of my all-time biggest pet peeves with the Mac. Okay, so what I had to do was I had to take each of these data sets and combine them into one large data set that also included category. And here's what I ended up with ultimately uh, to do that. You could just click inside any one of your data sets and press Control A or Command A. Well, never mind about Mac. Um, and just, oops, let's try this again. And copy it. We'll just copy it over here. And then we're just going to add another column for category. In order to create pivot tables and pivot charts, you have to have your data in this format. You can only have, essentially, column labels. You can't have row labels. So everything has to be totally vertical like this. And sometimes it means you have some duplication, uh, but this is how it has to be set up. So this first category here was seen. So what I did was I just said, okay, seen click on it, double click to send it down. And if you control down arrow, you'll see that, okay, yes, this did go to the bottom of the data set here. Um, what I'm going to do here is format this as a table. I created a custom table format for this client. Just keep it all copacetic. Okay. Control down arrow, actually control up arrow. Let's go and grab our next one. So uh, this one will be blood. And that obviously I don't need the headings this time. So I'm just going to grab the data. And if you have your data set formatted as a table, I'm going to press escape to get rid of the marching answer. If you have it formatted as a table, if you press Control A once, it's just going to select the data. If you press it again, it's going to grab your headings as well. In our case, we just need the data. So let's go back here. Control down the arrow to get to the bottom. Add this. And then once again, add the category and send it down and just rinse and repeat. And that's what I did with each of these data sets, which ultimately resulted in this list here, all keywords with categories. So now what we're going to do is go to Insert. And if you are using 2013, like I am, you'll go to Charts, Pivot Chart. If you're using 2010, was a little weird because you had to go to tables, pivot table, and then there was a drop down menu, and from that drop down menu, you would choose pivot chart. So I think this is more intuitive. So we're going to choose pivot chart. But even when you create a pivot chart, it's going to create a pivot table with the pivot chart. For some reason, it's not selecting my headings here. So I'm just going to click 
inside of here. Press Control A twice to make sure I get the headings as well. And we'll go ahead and put this on a new worksheet. So now, if we go back here, you'll see I have here a report filter, and then I have the keywords in the, the rows and the search volume and competition as the values. So we're just going to pull everything where it goes. So the category here is going to go into filter. That's a report filter. And then we're going to put the keywords here, search volume here, and competition here. Now, a couple of things. One, I created a custom pivot table for this client as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And I always get rid of grid lines because I hate them. And then I'm just going to choose one of these categories. We'll choose one. Because if you have everything, it makes the chart pretty ridiculous and difficult to work with. I'm going to make this chart bigger because some of these categories have more keywords in them. A couple of cleanup things we're going to do. Actually, I think I need to have all selected uh, for this to work right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to order these in descending order. Um, so you just right click on any cell in the column that you want to order. And then choose sort, sort largest to smallest. That'll put the more competitive keywords to the left. But then I really don't like the formatting here. So I always add a thousand separator, which you just get to under number. And then I get rid of the decimal places. One problem this is going to create though is it turns this formatting for the thousand separator and also for the currency formatting turns the zero into a hyphen, which I just really don't prefer. I'd rather that say zero. So I'm just going to press control one to pull up, pull up my formatting options. And I wrote a blog post on this, so I'm not going to go into detail. I'll link to the blog post, but essentially, uh, up to the first semicolon is the formatting for a positive value. Up to the sec second semicolon is the formatting for a negative value. And up to the third semicolon is the formatting for zero. So what I'm going to do is delete these question marks and the hyphen and just replace it with a zero. If you don't delete the question marks, then the zero ends up indented and it doesn't line up with the rest of the numbers. So now you see it's a zero. Next up, what we're going to do is uh, convert these to percentages. Right now, these look like they're greater than 100%, but that's just because we have some duplication here. You won't see that, though, when you choose individual categories. So that, that will all go away. That's just because you have some keywords that fit into more than one category. So this fit into crime scene and cleanup. All right, so now that we've done that, now we're going to select an individual category. And now what we want to do is we want to create a combination chart out of this. In 2013, Microsoft added this really cool option under change chart type. So you just uh, choose the design tab while your pivot chart is selected. And anytime you choose your pivot chart, you'll get these extra tabs, Analyze, Design, and Format, specific to the pivot chart. If you choose your pivot table, then you're going to have uh, two extra tabs with pivot table options. So going back to our pivot chart, if you choose Change Chart Type, it has this combo option, which is really, really nice. So we can actually choose what we want. So we actually want our search volume to use a clustered column like you see here and the competition to use a line and you can the line is in there but because it's a percentage it's obviously not going to show up but if we pop that onto a secondary axis boom there it is okay now if you're using 2010 let me pull up 2010 here 
what you have to do is from the pivot table, let me create a pivot chart here. You have to create either a, a line chart or a cluster column chart. I usually start with cluster column. And then you're going to need to convert competition to a line. To do that, you'll just go to format because it's very difficult. It's really easy to select this series because it's just right there, but it's very difficult to select the competition because it's such a small number you can't grab it. If you run into that problem, just go to format and then select competition. Now we can press control 1 to pull up our formatting options and pop this onto a secondary axis. It's going to look hideous. But then we can go to design, change chart type, and change it to align. And then clean up from there. Okay, we're going to go back to 2013. And I'm not going to go through all of the formatting options because I don't want this video to get too long. And I cover formatting in quite a few videos. But what I am going to do is get rid of these buttons. Now normally I just right click on any button and choose hide all field buttons on chart. In this case I actually kind of like the category button. So what I'm going to do is just hide value field buttons on chart and right click on this and basically you're choosing the first hide option for each of these. And then we'll keep that. That way someone working with your chart can either choose a new category from over here on the pivot table or on the pivot chart which is kind of nice. Next up, I really don't like in pivot tables how it adds in this sum of and if you summarize by average it will say average of so what I do is I get rid of that now if I just try to replace it with the same heading it's not going to let me however one little hack is if you just put a space afterwards it will let you change it so and then that way you don't get that sum of in here. Okay, next up, I got rid of my formatting. I'm going to actually fix that in the chart because I formatted this as a percentage, but for some reason on this sheet it keeps getting rid of it. So we'll try fixing it over here. We'll just select this, press Control 1, and in 2013, it actually pulls up all your formatting options to the right here, which is kind of nice, kind of sleek. However, when you're working with pivot tables and pivot charts, you run out of screen real estate pretty fast here. But we're going to go down to number and choose percentage, zero decimal places, and let's see if that holds. We'll choose a new category. Yes, that seems to work. So we'll go back to blood because it doesn't have as many values. Okay, so another thing I really don't like is how Excel by default puts the legend to the right. I think that's the worst place for a legend. So I'm going to pop that to the top. And then I also always bump this up. I also never go with the standard colors. The reason I use their colors and not my branded colors is I was contracted to create a dashboard for them. So I wanted their regular charts, pivot charts, tables, pivot tables to all have their branded colors. I'm not going to go through all of that, but if you want to change the colors, which you definitely should, in 2013, you have these fill options, border options. In 2010, you have the same options. You just click to select the series, press Control 1, and Control 1 will always pull up the formatting options for whatever you have selected, and then you can choose fill, border, all of that from here.
okay? And the last thing I always do is I always add a title to every chart. So one nice option in 2013, so you have this plus sign, and you can add a chart title from here. And you just click in there and choose your chart title. So obviously this isn't my title, but we'll just put that in there for now. And that's it. I mean, you're just going to go through and format everything that you want to format. But this is basically how you create a pivot chart. And now any category that we choose from, the pivot chart will update. And you'll want to play with this. So one thing I did was I tilted these labels so that in a chart like this, they're not bumping into each other. So to do that in 2013, you select size and properties. And for the text direction, I actually used a custom angle of minus 45 degrees. And that got me what I wanted. But that will get you where you need to go. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me at Annie at AnnieLytics.com.